If your washing machine is banging like this, chances are good it's a vertical modular type machine. We're going to take a quick peek inside and show you what it looks like. The tub on this type of machine has suspension rods at each corner holding the tub, suspending the tub, and they wear out. And then you get a great deal of vibration. You can see here as I push these how they shake, pop up, back up and down like a shock absorber that's worn out on a car. Hold one. Replacement barely moves. It takes a great deal more force to make it move. We filed off that flattened end to take a quick look inside of one of these, see what's going on. This is the part that's failed. I'll pry off the cap. There's a little round foam plug inside here that's responsible for providing the uh, gripping, the grip on the rod. Looks like the deterioration's on the inside here. Let's cut it in half. Sorry, autofocus failed here. Oh, it's deteriorated, coming apart. It's been a reaction with uh, grease, maybe, that they put in there. Because these things are greased up. See that grease in there? That might have been what doomed it. I think, theoretically, you could put this, slide this all back on here, if you could find a new piece, and then just hammer down here and flatten that out afterwards, just like it was before. We bought a new uh, kit of rods. Now let's go about replacing them. Shut off the water. Pull the hoses off. I'm going to be working in a tight area to show that it's possible to do this job without moving the machine out into an open area. And inevitably some water is going to come out of these hoses, so you may want to put a small bowl or pail down there. And the machines made by Whirlpool and sold under a bunch of names have just three quarter inch hex screws that you need to take off. I painted them red to make it easy to see. This third one, there's a little plate there that you have to remove as well. With those three screws out, you can uh, just lift the whole top of the tub as a unit upward and uh, just tilt it back and lean it against something. It kind of rests on some hinges. It rests on these. I used a bungee cord to uh, hook it up to the, to the cabinet to keep it from falling on the first couple rods that I did, but you don't need to do it that way. Now you can just reach down, and I'm using a channel lock pliers, and uh, lift the rod up, pull it off the, uh, the mount here, and then you just twist the, the bushing and bearing out until it fits through a slot, and drop it down. I'll let go of it. It's going to fall to the floor. Okay, you need to lift the front of the machine 9 or 10 inches. I'm using a jack, a scissors jack. You could put anything else that's 10 inches underneath there, slide it underneath there so you can uh, remove and install the rod. So yeah, anything less than 9.5 to 10 inches is going to make it difficult to fit that through the, uh, the hole on the hanger. Now the kit will come with, uh, the replacement kit will come with new bearings and bushings. I checked it out and um, I found that the old ones were in good shape yet. I'm taking them out right now. Um, just using a screwdriver. And then when I put the new ones in, I found that they were kind of sloppy, looser, and I just preferred the originals, so I stayed with them. Okay, grab a replacement suspension rod. Got these from Walmart.com. Yeah, we're coming in from underneath. Bit of a challenge to get it to find that little opening in the hanger. But when we do, we can set the machine back down again. 
and I lost some footage of hanging the uh, the rod and the bearing, but good news is I have it on the other three. Now let's replace the left front. Okay, so now we're going to get underneath the machine. I'm trying to shoot a little video under here is challenging. And uh, just wiggle it until we can get that hook part of it through the hole. <laughs> Thunk. It was hard. And the hook will always hang up on the hole. You can count on that. This one moves even more freely than the other one. No dampening effect at all. It's kind of easier to thread this through from the bottom and just kind of let it sit like this flat on the floor. Then we lower it, it'll feed up through there. Yeah, I missed this shot on the right front, but. Here's a real clear image from the uh, left front of the machine. Mm, that's not it. There. Here's a clear comparison, left front to left rear, of the shock absorption difference between a new one and an old. Okay, next we're going to do this one. We're going to do this a little differently. I'm going to do it with this door closed, with the lid closed. But first, let's pull it. Down it goes. Okay, now we're going to close the lid. Now we'll lift up the left side. These are getting looser all along. Kind of a bad angle there. There it is. That's all we need. Just rest it on the floor there. Then we'll set it down. It tends to stick. Set it back against. Okay, there's another one done. To this last one, we're going to rotate the machine. Knife. Let's pull this one. Working in the close quarters of this laundry room means that we have to uh, kind of horse this machine around in order to do this uh, right rear uh, suspension rod. And here's the final one. Another slippery, slippery one. There it goes. Here it goes. I struggled a little bit on the first one, but those last three um, rods took about five minutes a piece, I'd take it. So it really doesn't take very long for the DIY person to do this job. You install the three screws in the cover. in there. So we've given it a number of challenging loads with good results. No more banging. Thanks for watching.
and please subscribe.